we've never found anything like the solar system. Is it a freak in space? Since the landmark discovery in 1992 of two planets orbiting a star outside of our solar system, thousands of new worlds have been added to a rapidly growing list of exoplanets in the Milky Way galaxy. We've learned many things from this vast catalog of alien worlds orbiting alien stars. But one small detail stands out like a sore thumb. We've found nothing else out there like our own solar system. This has led some to conclude that our home star and its brood could be outliers in some way, perhaps the only planetary system of its kind. By extension, this could mean life itself is an outlier, that the conditions that formed Earth and its veneer of self-replicating chemistry are difficult to replicate. If you're just looking at the numbers, the outlook is grim. By a large margin, the most numerous exoplanets we've identified to date are of a type not known to be conducive to life, giants and subgiants of the gas and maybe ice variety. Most exoplanets we've seen so far orbit their stars very closely, practically hugging them, so close that their sizzling temperatures would be much higher than the known habitability range. It's possible that as we continue searching, the statistics will balance out and we'll see more places that remind us of our own backyard. But the issue is much more complex than just looking at numbers. Exoplanet science is limited by the capabilities of our technology. More than that, our impression of the true variety of alien worlds risks being limited by our own imagination. What's really out there in the Milky Way galaxy and beyond may be very different from what we actually see. Expectations and how to thwart them. Exoplanet science has a history of subverting expectations right from the very beginning. If you go back to that world I grew up in when I was a kid, we only knew of one planetary system. Planetary scientist John T. Horner of the University of Southern Queensland tells Science Alert. And so that was this kind of implicit assumption, and sometimes the explicit assumption, that all planetary systems would be like this. You know, you'd have rocky planets near the star that were quite small, you'd have gas giants a long way from the star that were quite big. And that's how planetary systems would be. For this reason, it took scientists a while to identify an exoplanet orbiting a main sequence star, like our Sun. Assuming other solar systems were like ours, the telltale signs of heavyweight planets tugging on their stars would take years to observe, just as it takes our own gas giants years to complete an orbit. Things like the solar system are very hard for us to find, they're a bit beyond us technologically at the minute, Horner says. The terrestrial planets would be very unlikely to be picked up from any of the surveys we've done so far. You're very unlikely to be able to find a Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars around a star like the Sun. How to find a planet? Let's be perfectly clear, the methods we use to detect exoplanets are incredibly clever. There are currently two that are the workhorses of the exoplanet detection toolkit, the transit method and the radial velocity method. In both cases, you need a telescope sensitive to very minute changes in the light of a star. The signals each are looking for, however, couldn't be more different. For the transit method you'll need a telescope that can keep a star fixed in its view for a sustained period of time. That's why instruments such as NASA's Space-Based Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite TESS, is such a powerhouse, capable of locking onto a segment of the sky for over 27 days without being interrupted by Earth's rotation. The aim for these kinds of telescopes is to spot the signal of a transit.
When an exoplanet passes between us and its host star, like a tiny cloud blotting out a few rays of sunshine. These dips in light are tiny, as you can imagine. And one blip is insufficient to confidently infer the presence of an exoplanet. There are many things that can dim a star's light, many of which are one-off events. Multiple transits, especially ones that exhibit regular periodicity, are the gold standard. Therefore, larger exoplanets that are on short orbital periods, closer to their stars than Mercury is to the Sun, some much, much closer, on orbits of less than one Earth week, are favored in the data. The radial velocity method detects the wobble of a star caused by the gravitational pull of the exoplanet as it swings around in its orbit. A planetary system, you see, doesn't really orbit a star so much as dance in a coordinated shuffle. The star and the planets orbit a mutual center of gravity known as the barycenter. For the solar system, that's a point very, very close to the surface of the Sun, or just outside it, primarily due to the influence of Jupiter, which is more than twice the mass of all the rest of the planets combined. Unlike a transit's blink and you miss it event, the shift in the star's position is an ongoing change that doesn't require constant monitoring to notice. We can detect the motion of distant stars orbiting their barycenters because that motion changes their light due to something called the Doppler effect. As the star moves towards us, the waves of light coming in our direction are squished slightly towards the bluer end of the spectrum. As it moves away, the waves stretch towards the redder end. A regular wobble in the star's light suggests the presence of an orbital companion. Again, the data tends to favor larger planets that exert a stronger gravitational influence on shorter, closer orbits to their star. Aside from these two prominent methods, it's possible on occasion to directly image an exoplanet as it orbits its star. Though an extremely difficult thing to do, it may become more common in the JWST era. According to astronomer Daniel Bayliss of the University of Warwick in the UK, this approach would uncover an almost opposite class of exoplanet to the short orbit variety. In order to see an exoplanet without it being swamped by the glare of its parent star, the two bodies need to have a very wide separation. This means the direct imaging approach favors planets on relatively long orbits. However, larger exoplanets would still be spotted more easily through this method, for obvious reasons. Each of the discovery methods has its own biases, Bayliss explains. Earth with its year-long loop around the Sun sits between the orbital extremes favored by different detection techniques, he adds, so, to find planets with a one-year orbit is still very, very difficult.